To finish up with the triangle uh, topic, we are now going to discuss about the triangle theorems, and one of them is the mid-segment theorem. Mid-segment theorem states that the segment connecting the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and is half as long as that side. Therefore, if I have triangle ABC and let's say AX and XB are equal, meaning to say that X is the midpoint and let's say that this is Y being the midpoint. If I connect these two midpoints, I will now have a segment that is parallel to the third side, <clears throat> excuse me, parallel to the third side and going to be half as long as the third side. So let us make up some, um, let's say this is two inches. <clears throat> if this is two inches, then it's automatic that this one is one inch. So that is the meaning of the mid-segment theorem. Because of the condition that this segment is parallel to the third side, all the corresponding angles will now be considered congruent. And the proof is these two are corresponding and they're congruent. These two are corresponding and they're congruent. And by the identity property of equality, angle B is congruent to itself. Thereby, triangle XBY is proportion, I'm sorry, is similar to triangle ABC which means that their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. The next type of triangle theorem is the base angles theorem. Base angles theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. The converse of this theorem also works, that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are also congruent. So to explain this, I have this as an example. So let's look at the theorem. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, which means XY is congruent to ZY, you can conclude that the angles opposite them right here, on the base angle right base angles right here that they will be also congruent now let's look at the converse the converse states that if two angles of a triangle are congruent let's say these two are congruent then definitely the sides opposite them which is here right there are also congruent Let's look at example number two. I have here a right triangle. And with my right triangle, I am going to give this as given. I will say that this is 45 degrees. And I will say that this is also 45 degrees. So because the base angles are, I'm now working on the converse. The converse says that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are also congruent. And in this case, what I gave was that the two angles right here are congruent. Therefore, you can conclude that MN, MN is congruent to ON. So these two right here will definitely be congruent by the converse of the base angles theorem. In my third example, I have triangle RST with the given sides RS, 8 centimeters and ST or TS 8 centimeters. Guys, even without me knowing what the exact measurement of the base angles R and T are, I can conclude that this is congruent to angle R is congruent to angle T because of the base angle theorem that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, which in this case are, then the angles opposite them are also congruent. The next triangle theorem is a triangle inequality theorem, <clears throat> excuse me, which says that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. So let's explore this theorem by looking at this figure. It only says that if I choose any two sides, any of them, for example, one and two, 
the sum of this length and this length will always be bigger than the other side. Let's say, for example, I choose this side 2 and side 3. It only says that if I add the length of the two, side 2 with the length of side 3, that their sum is going to be bigger than side 1. The same way as when I add side 1 and side 3, it will be bigger than side 2. Okay, for our example, let us now have side 1 as 10, side 2 as 6. What is side 3? Let's say that side 3 is an x. Let's find side 3. We know that based off of this theorem, side 3 must have a length that is less than 16, which is the sum of 10 and 6, but greater than 4, which is the difference between 10 and 6. So for our example number 2, what if side 1 is 8 inches? Side 2 is your x, that's what you're looking for, and side 3 is 5 inches. So we know that side 2, which is the x, must have a length that is less than 13 inches, which is the sum of 8 and 5, but must be greater than 3 inches, which is the difference between 8 and 5. So for our next theorem, it says exterior angle theorem, and the theorem states this. The exterior angle of a triangle, which is this one, is greater than either of the remote interior angles. And the remote interior angles are the angles that are far away from the exterior angle. So the 60 right here is not the remote. These two are the remote interior angles. And it says that the exterior angle is always greater than either of the measurements of these two. Now. We also said, after looking at this example, we kind of figured out and generalized that the exterior angle will always be equal to the sum of the remote interior angles combined. So as a generalization, we would say that the exterior angle of a triangle is always equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Now we go to the next theorem, which is the hinge theorem. The hinge theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent to the other two sides of a triangle, and the included angle of the first triangle is larger than the included angle of the second triangle, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle. The example for the hinge theorem goes like this. If uh, side 1 is congruent to the side 1 of the second triangle and side 2 of the first triangle is congruent to side 2 of the second triangle, but the included angle on the first one, let's say, is 60 degrees, and the included angle on the second one, let's say, is 110 degrees, you can conclude by the hinge theorem that the opposite side to the smaller angle is going to be a shorter side and the opposite side to the bigger angle is going to be your longer side. And that's the meaning of the hinge theorem. So as a general reminder, angles and sides relate to each other, which means that the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side and the biggest angle is opposite the biggest side. So as an example, given triangle ABC with angle A 65 degrees, angle B 100 degrees, and angle C 15 degrees, as you can see, all these angles are uh, least to greatest. The 15 degree angle is your smallest one, therefore your smallest angle, I mean your smallest angle is angle C, which is 15 degrees, and definitely 15 degrees is going to be opposite the smallest side because that's your smallest angle therefore your smallest side is a b side a b followed by 65 degrees is the next to 15 degrees and your biggest one is the 100 degrees so this is going to be angle a right here is going to be opposite the medium sized side which is side b c and uh, definitely, since 
angle B is your biggest angle, this biggest angle will also be opposite the biggest side. Therefore, your biggest side is AC.